So the third scenario would be that the responsibility stays on the sinner, which it is, it is their, their fault for not accepting the grace of God. But for me, in order for that to be fair, they need the opportunity to hear the gospel. So to me, the, the, the logical conclusion is then somehow God has to get the gospel to everybody. Because if that was just up to us and we're sinful, we're not perfect, right? We, we know that there are opportunities that we have to give the gospel and we don't, right? So that means that somehow in the background, God is using us and using the believers to get the gospel to everyone. And, and that's just something that we would have to accept by faith in order for God to be just. In order for God to rightly send somebody to hell, for not believing the gospel, they must have had the opportunity to hear the gospel. Or we can say that God knew that even if they heard the gospel, they would not believe. But there must be that, that, that element there that, um, that they can be held accountable because they would reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'll show you a couple of verses that would support that view. Uh, Romans 1. Because there are verses in the Bible that talk about the gospel or the word of God going out into all the world. Look at here in Romans 1.8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. So that can be one point in time where hey, did, we can say, hey, it did go everywhere. Otherwise, how can Paul rightly say that everyone throughout the whole world is speaking of your faith and that's the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Colossians 1.21 and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So again, here we see that the gospel was preached to every creature under heaven. Uh, let me show you another one. Just a couple of other examples. Oh, I got a typo there. First Kings 10.1. And, and I, this is just an example where I, I just wanted to show that, you know, word spreads even in, 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 in the old times there. It says, And when the queen of Sheba had heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. So even back in the time of Solomon and the queen of Sheba, word is spreading about the name of the Lord to the point where the queen of Sheba hears about it and then she wants to go and find more, find out more. Um, And this really, I think, you know, it's funny that this chapter is the one where we say, well, you know, how should they hear without a preacher? You need to be that preacher. But look at what this, uh, this chapter actually says. I'll show you. Uh, we'll just start from uh, verse 13. Sorry, it's not me being slow. It's just the computer. All right. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Right? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So that's what we're familiar with, with right? And we'll say, you know, that's why we've got to get the gospel out there. The, the, our feet are beautiful. If we go and preach the gospel to them, they're not going to hear unless we go and preach it to them. But well, let's read on. Look at this. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for as I saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But look at this. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the end of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. 
But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. So what is he saying here? He's saying, you know, yeah, how shall they hear without a preacher? But then he says, but have they, haven't they heard? Verily their sound went out to all the earth and unto the ends of the world. And he's saying here at the end, he's saying, Isaiah is very bold. I was found of them that sought me not. So it's like the Gentiles weren't even looking for me and I sent the word to them. And then he's saying here to Israel, and all day long I'm preaching the word to them and they, they reject me. So, you know, even the, the chapter that is probably what we think about, that a preacher needs to be there in order to hear the gospel, and I'm not discounting that truth, I'll explain it in a second, is saying that God somehow gets the word out to everybody. And he gets the word out to the Gentiles and he gets the word out to, to Israel. Um, He's getting the word out there. And the verse, I guess, that I think of, you know, because think about when we think of uh, bad things that happen in our life and choices that we make, we think of Romans 8, 28, right? We, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And, and we recognize, hey, even though we have a free will, we can make right and wrong choices. God ultimately, in his, I guess we want to call it sovereignty, right? Or whatever, he can ultimately take all our free will decisions and, and work them for good. And I think of the gospel getting out there the same way. You know, even though we're not always obedient, we don't go soul winning as much as we do, God still somehow uses what we do do and he makes sure the gospel gets to everybody so that everybody gets a chance to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what are the implications of this view? Well, the implications of this view is, does that remove the urgency of soul winning? Does it? Well, it does maybe for you, right? Because that does mean that if you don't get the gospel to that person, somebody else will. So the, the, the urgency, so the impl this is why there's, there's, there's implications here. And this is why for me it was a bit uncomfortable to first accept because I've, I guess we've grown up in the face just thinking like, you are responsible, you get the gospel out there. And I mean, that's good to, to encourage you to go out to get, get the gospel out there. But then it doesn't mean we have to, we, we should ignore the truths that we read in the Bible and ignore the logic and the, the justice of the punishment fitting the crime. So the implication would be, does that change the urgency of the gospel? Well, possibly for the soul winner, meaning maybe it's not a case of if you don't get that person to the gospel, they may never hear and they'll go to hell. It could just be a case of more so, um, well, if you want to be part of the work, and if you want to be rewarded, you have an opportunity to work in the Lord's vineyard. And if you don't, you miss out. Maybe that, from the soul winner's perspective, is uh, the position that it is. It's like, hey, well, we have soul winning today. If you don't go, if you're not a part of the soul winning in this church, hey, you're just going to miss out on the rewards and the, and the extra inheritance that you can get when we go into the promised land, right? But maybe it's not, you know, well, if you don't give that person the gospel, then you're, it's your fault that they went to hell. Because to me, that, that's not fair. But does that change the urgency of the person, the, the unsaved person, to get saved today? No. Because it doesn't matter who's telling them, right? They still need to get... Today is still the day of salvation. If they're not a believer, they need to get saved before they die and go to hell. So the urgency doesn't change for the, the, for the unsaved person. And when you're compelling them, the urgency doesn't change. You still want to be, it to be urgent for them. All I'm saying is that if, if you sin and you don't give the gospel to that person... Does that mean that that person is without hope? I guess I believe for, for it to be fair and righteous according to God, somebody will get that gospel to them. They'll, they will hear somehow and they will have ample opportunity to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so I guess that does sort of change maybe that perspective. But I don't, yeah, I guess, you know, we've always been encouraged to go soul winning to, to, to think about those that don't hear. But maybe the encouragement should just be, hey, do you love God? Do you want to obey him? Do you want to be part? Do you want to be part of the work that God is doing um, or not? So does it remove the urgency of soul winning? I guess somewhat yes, maybe for you only. God's, God's will has not changed. He still wants everyone to be saved. Um, and we can still understand that verse where it says, how shall they hear without a preacher? Because somebody is still required to preach it to them. It's just the question is, is there only one person? It's kind of like with marriage, right? Is there just one person that God has planned for you? Is there just one person that is going to preach the gospel to that person? And if that person doesn't, then they just, 
you know, it's like married people. It's like if you don't meet that one person that God has planned for you, then you've missed, you've missed God's will. You, 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 you've not gone according to God's plan. So it's, is it like that with soul winning where it's like if you don't give the gospel to that person, then that, there's no hope for that person because you were the person appointed and if you don't do it, then that person's damned to hell. Or is it anybody can give that person the gospel? Who wants to reap that reward? You know, who want, who, there are souls out there ready to hear the gospel and ready to get saved. Who wants it? What, is that the mindset? Who wants to claim that prize? Who's going to go into the promised land? Or who's, you know, is, is that the mindset that we go with soul winning? Not, oh man, I better go, otherwise somebody's going to go to hell. Or is it, I better go because I want to be part of this work. So yeah, it will, it'll change that view. So um, that's why there's, there's implications with, with, with what position you take. It'll change what motivates you to go and, and, and your responsibility as the soul winner. Um, so our actions definitely make a difference. I'm not saying that because obviously they do because if our actions didn't make a difference, why would God reward us? Do you know what I mean? Like if, if you're going out and preaching the gospel to somebody and then getting saved and, and they would have got saved anyway like a Calvinist, why would God reward you for that work? So it does make a difference. You, you, you reap that harvest. I guess it's kind of like a vineyard, right? There are fruit there to be picked. And who wants to go and pick them? The more fruit you can go get, the more you're going to get rewarded. Um, but the, that's why. The question remains, but I, am I the person's only opportunity? Or do they get other opportunities besides me? Even if I disobey God and sin, will I send that person to hell? Another thought as well is, you know, God promises that if we seek, we, we shall find him. So if somebody, you know, there, there won't be somebody that's seeking the truth that won't find it. You know, God, God promises that if somebody seeks after him, they will find it. <clears throat> and, you know, God, God will do what is just and right. So somebody might say, but, you know, but there are people who die never hearing about Jesus. You know, I mean, yes, possibly. But we, we really don't know. Like I said in the beginning, you know, is it, is it that... They did hear the gospel and we're just assuming that they've never heard? Or is it that God knows that they would not believe even if they did hear it? And that's why he doesn't bother to get a preacher to them. You know? God knows uh, obviously more than us. 